Hello there. Hi. I'm Big Pezza. If you've never watched the channel, just for a little bit of background, well, I've done a fair bit of travel. I still do do a fair bit of travel on my motorcycles. I've been to uh, over 25 countries uh, on my travels over the years, and I thought I'd just make this little video sharing my experience with, well, what I prefer, GPS, phones, sat-navs, maps. So, for starters, the old school maps. Now I respect you if you can look at a map, read it really quickly and look, work out exactly where you are just by well, looking at it in three seconds flat. I, I just can't do that. So I don't tend to use them. Another reason why I don't use them is maps. They're a little bit of a faff. You have to get them out, fold them in the correct way, put them in a waterproof bag. And, and what if you have to get the map out and change it over and it's raining, the map can, well, it's gonna get wet and deteriorate in front of your eyes. So that's why I use GPS. Now I don't always use the best gear, I don't even use the latest gear. This is my Garmin Zumo 220, it has been, well, on my bike for the best part of a decade and even though it may be slow at times, I still don't see the point of upgrading. This just still works and my phone is in my pocket and it can do the same job but probably a little bit better. So I tend to use the Garmin for the long trips. If I'm going to be on the bike for an entire day, then I'll just plug in the Garmin, put my route and off I go. I don't need to worry about it running out of battery or anything like that. It's plugged in, I don't need to worry about it. It's a really nice little sat nav, it works with the gloves, it's nice big button presses. So I don't need to take my gloves off in the rain or something to just quickly look where the nearest petrol station is or anything like that. It is just a handy little thing to have on the bike. But for the shorter rides, you know, like an hour or under an hour or something like that, or just need to look quickly look up something, then yeah, I'll just have the phone mounted on the bike and use that instead. Now when it comes to phones, there's a lot of map apps out there, I guess you could say. But for all intents and purposes, look, I'm using an Android. I don't have an iPhone. I <clears throat> don't like them, to be honest, um, because you can actually use the location on a Android phone without having your data on. You don't need to have any data or even a SIM card in there. You could actually just use it as a standalone device. So combine the features of downloaded maps and having no need for the data on, then an Android phone actually works really well. Now there's a lot of map apps out there, but the two I use are Maps.me, which is a free app. And if you don't have, or if you're in a country, and you need to go to the next country, you don't have any map data for the next country, then what you can do is you can just download the map for the next country. Now, unlike Google Maps, Google Maps has a lot of information that you don't necessarily need. And it's nice to have all that information, but Maps.me doesn't have all the information. So downloading that sort of map to your device is only about 20 megabytes. Or on Google Maps, it'll be four, 500 megabytes or even a gigabyte. And if you're in countries where their Wi-Fi or their internet is slow, you ain't gonna download a gig very quick. I think for one instance for myself, I needed that map for that country and I just used maps.me because every Wi-Fi connection I could find was maybe half a megabyte download speed. But most of the time, I'm using just Google Maps for anything under an hour. Anything further or something like that, then yes, I'm just gonna end up setting up the Garmin. Now, why don't you just use the phone all the time? The phone is actually kind of better. It's quicker, more responsive. You can quickly flick around the map, opposed to my slow Garmin Zumo. Well, if you're on the road all day for a solid day, then the phone's probably gonna run out of battery. I mean, you could plug it into the bike, but there's two reasons why I don't recommend that. One, it's gonna get extremely hot. It's gonna get really hot and probably shut down if you had it in one of them little tank bags with a clear pouch or one of them waterproof pouches. It's just gonna get really hot in there. And the second reason is having a phone plugged in on the bike while there is a lot of vibration going around. That vibration is, gonna, is now plugged into your phone, the charging port. There's gonna be a lot of jostling about and that phone port can break or get damaged and then you have to hold the phone at a funny angle to get it charged. My old Garmin Zumo on some really hot days never shut off. Where phones would overheat, my old Garmin did not shut down but it would not take a charge. And also it works the other way. So if it's too cold, if you're riding in say plus three degrees, that's gonna be minus on a bike. And over time, 
my phone actually shut down because the chemical reaction of the battery slows down to such a point that there's not enough power going to the phone it just goes blank it just gets too cold and shuts down so if you're going to be riding in extreme temperatures then i recommend having a sat nav or a dedicated sat nav over a phone but you know phones still are useful but where would you actually want to mount your phone now this is the phone that fell off my motorbike at high speed it was mounted to a ram cross mount or x mount whatever and i can't blame the mount for this because the phone is very big and thick and it did not fit properly so it's my fault this is my old phone this is the phone that i've had for years it went through europe with me it's been through loads of countries it's been dropped it's been on the bike and stayed on the bike while I've been in a crash in the X mount, so that's fine. It can hold your phone, that's important. Now, there's a couple of different mounting systems out there. There's the X grip and the uh, other one. It all depends on what sort of phone you have, to be honest. And you can get some cheapy aftermarket mounts out there, but then it's like, do you want to put your thousand pound phone into a five pound phone mount that you got off eBay. So the only two phone mounts I can really recommend is the official RAM one and the grip, tri grip thingy that you can get. Like I say, it all depends on your phone. And that phone that fell off at speed while I was going in Scotland, um, that fell off and broke and smashed. It still works. It's a rugged phone. The screen broke, but nothing else did. I mean, it's still scratched and scuffed, but hey, it still works. But mounting a phone to your bike, it's not 100% safe. So that's why I usually go for these type of cheap phones. I just picked up this phone. It cost me £100. It's okay performance. It does all the jobs I need to do. And it's a cheap phone. If it crashes and breaks, I'll just get another one. There's also the added thing of not using your phone as a sat nav or if it's your one device that you're using. I'm using my phone to take pictures of my holiday, take videos as a sat nav. Oh, I need to call home. Oh, I can't, the battery's dead or the phone's broken. It's very bad having one device, even though it can do it all, it shouldn't do it all. You should always have a redundancy. That's my redundancy plan. Use the main sat nav most of the time. Anyway, that's just my video, my tips on, well, how I travel. Maybe other people do it differently. You know, people do use paper maps still. People do use sat nav solely. Some people use their phones solely. You can do that as well. Let me know in the comments down below what you use. And because this video is going to be updated as soon as I release it, someone might have a better or know of a better app they use for maps. If you know or find an app that is better or even an off-roading app that's good as well, like Rangefinder or whatever it is called, then yeah. Uh, leave it in the comments down below and other people can see it and maybe check out them as well but they're the two I recommend maps.me, google maps and my garden zoom up not that bad at all was that your phone? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy I found it though oh my god I can get the sim card I've got the tools at home to get all it out oh my god anyway thanks for watching or listening to me ramble about this and that um, yeah, drop it a like, leave a comment, whatever, subscribe, uh, check out my Facebook, Bebo, Twitter, MySpace, Instagram, and I'll catch you in the next video. Ciao.